Warning, major spoilers ahead. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie deaths that pissed you off. Good shot. Okay, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire. Looking for more WatchMojo videos with a British twist? Well, pack your bags and take a trip to WatchMojo UK for even more bloody brilliant content. For this list, we're looking at big screen deaths that annoyed fans or moviegoers and felt unjustified or avoidable. Naturally, there will be spoilers ahead. Saddest movie deaths, like John Coffey's in The Green Mile, are for another list entirely. Sorry for bringing it up. Don't put me in the dark. I was afraid of the dark. Number 10. Joe Brody, Godzilla. When Legendary announced their plans for a shared fictional universe involving famous cinematic monsters, people were understandably excited. And when it was revealed that Breaking Bad's Brian Cranston would star in the franchise's first entry, the level of excitement rose considerably. Egregiously, Cranston's character Joe Brody, who'd been featured heavily in Godzilla's marketing campaign, was killed off just one third of the way through the film. Movies that rely heavily on the suspension of disbelief need characters that audiences can get behind. So killing off Brody, the only character with a solid backstory who was being played by one of the best actors in the business, was a poor, read stupid decision. Go home to your family. Keep them safe. Okay. Whatever it takes. Stay with me. Number 9. Johnny Cage, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. No, Johnny! With a 3% approval rating and a 25% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, it's safe to say that Mortal Kombat Annihilation wasn't exactly a hit with fans or critics. Much of this is due to the fact that fan favorite Johnny Cage, who headlined 1995's Mortal Kombat, was killed off while people were still settling into their seats. Surrender rating. Or this one dies. Oh, and he wasn't even being played by the same actor. How can you expect people to not get seriously pissed off about the death of a beloved character if you just throw in a random actor and snap his neck 10 minutes into the film? The answer? You can't. <laughs> in six days, you will all bow to me! Number 8. Mako Mori, Pacific Rim Uprising. Jake, that Jaeger's power reading is the Unnecessary and avoidable. These are the two words that come to mind when we think of Mako Mori's death in Pacific Rim Uprising. Despite having had a major role in the previous film, Mori is unceremoniously dispatched in the sequel, killed by a rogue Jaeger while en route to a meeting in Australia. Mako's it! Her death was clearly meant to galvanize protagonist Jake Pentecost, giving him emotional investment in the battle to come. But really, it just feels like lazy writing. Mako Mori was a badass warrior in Pacific Rim, so to see her die in a transparent plot device in the sequel was pretty disappointing. Mako! Number 7. Scott Summers, Cyclops, X-Men The Last Stand <laughs> After playing a key role in the previous two films, it was with a heavy heart and a whole lot of expletives that fans bid adieu to Scott Summers, also known as Cyclops, in the third installment of the X-Men film series. After driving to the site of Jean Grey's resting place, Scott is amazed when she appears before him. Scott? How? The two share a tender embrace, but then, seemingly out of nowhere, she kills him. It's rare for a superhero to bite the dust in such an unheroic manner, so fans were understandably pissed by Scott's lame ass death sequence. <laughs> Number 6. Luke Skywalker, Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. See you around, kid. Much has been made of Luke Skywalker's death since Star Wars The Last Jedi hit theaters back in 2017. For those of you who may not have seen it, of which there can only be like a handful because the film made over a billion dollars, Luke's death played out like this. He sends a force projection of himself to help the Resistance, accomplishes that task, and then dies on Octu. That's it. The end. Was this death shocking? Absolutely. Was it justified? Not for a second. And don't even get us started on Admiral Akbar's blink and you'll miss it death scene, which was a missed opportunity for an epic send off. <laughs> Number 5. All the main characters, the Transformers, the movie. Die, In 
been one of the most shameless examples of a film killing off characters to make money, the Transformers the movie wiped out a slew of iconic Autobots and Decepticons so that they could usher in a new cast and sell more toys. Until that day, till all are one. The most hotly contested of these deaths was Optimus Prime, who was both the leader of the Autobots and one of the most beloved characters the toy line ever produced. Of course, he was hardly the only one killed off. Ironhide, Ratchet, Brawn, and Prowl were also destroyed, along with the badass villains Megatron and Starscream. For shame. I accept your terms! I accept! Number 4. General Zod, Man of Steel. <laughs> Superman's a pretty cut and dry character. He's righteous, brave, and adheres to a strict code of personal conduct that forbids him from killing. So it was downright earth-shattering when he snapped General Zod's neck at the end of Man of Steel. The decision to have Superman kill in such a brutal fashion was condemned by fans and critics alike, with noted Superman writer Mark Wade claiming that when he saw it in theaters, he stood up and shouted, quote, "'That's it, you lost me, I'm out.'" The movie painted Superman into a corner he never should have been in and the result was a death that divided people like never before. Yeah! Number 3. Jack Dawson, Titanic Don't you say your goodbyes. Not yet. Do you understand me? On the surface, this death seems pretty heroic. Jack Dawson, the broke artist from the wrong end of the boat, finds himself stranded in the frigid waters of the North Atlantic Ocean with his beloved Rose. And while they soon find a piece of wreckage, they believe it's only big enough for one person, so Jack selflessly helps Rose onto it and spends the night slowly freezing to death while clinging to the edge. I'll never let go. <laughs> There's just one problem. There was clearly room for them both. Just look at how sprawled out Rose is. Didn't anyone ever tell them that body heat is crucial to surviving in sub-zero temperatures? Yeah, we are still not over this one. Did you feel bad at all letting Leo DiCaprio drown while you were safe floating on the big door? Number two, Ben, Night of the Living Dead. Steve, you want to get out in that field and build me a bonfire? Trapped in a farmhouse and surrounded by a swarm of reanimated corpses, a group of strangers must work together to ensure their survival. Such is the plot of this classic George A. Romero horror flick, which earned its status as one of the most subversive and controversial films of all time, thanks to its dramatic conclusion. After making it through the night, Ben awakens to the sound of gunshots. Believing himself to be saved, he ventures towards a window, only to be mistaken for a zombie and shot in the head. Having borne witness to his night of horrors, it's simply agonizing to watch Ben die in such an avoidable manner. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Number 1. Captain James T. Kirk, Star Trek Generations How do you kill one of the most iconic characters in cinematic history? Well, apparently not like this. Captain Kirk's death at the end of Star Trek Generations was met with considerable criticism from fans, who felt that the circumstances of his demise were hardly befitting his character's sizable legacy. And honestly, they have a point. Falling off a bridge? That's the best the writers could come up with. Perhaps the new series will find a way to redeem this unspeakable wrongdoing. But until then, Trekkies will remain royally pissed off. Oh my. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.